In this second series of videos on nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, we're going to deepen and extend our understanding of NMR spectra, looking first at what happens when protons have a heterotopic relationship within molecules, and how this affects chemical shift and coupling in proton NMR spectra. We're then going to transition to talking about carbon-13 NMR, which is a useful technique for determining the chemical environments of carbons in organic molecules. And finally, we're going to discuss two-dimensional NMR, in which two NMR spectra are plotted on the two axes of a graph, and cross peaks in the area of the graph give us information about coupling between the atoms represented on the two spectra. And these may be protons or protons and carbons. We'll begin with a discussion of how stereotopic relationships between protons affect chemical shift and coupling in proton NMR spectra. And this entire discussion is really just an application of the distinguishability properties of homotopic and heterotopic protons that we discussed previously. NMR is an achiral technique. The radio waves used are achiral. So homotopic and enantiotopic protons are indistinguishable by this technique. This means that they have the same properties and that they'll appear at identical chemical shifts. In other words, they'll appear to be overlapping. A nice example of this in action is the molecule shown here, where this hydrogen coming out towards us and this hydrogen going back away from us are homotopic due to an axis of symmetry present in this molecule running in this direction. Notice that these both have the same chemical shift, and they both show up at 2.52 ppm. If we were to integrate this peak, we would find that it integrates to two hydrogens. Interestingly, though, the coupling pattern reflects just the number of hydrogens adjacent to each homotopic hydrogen separately. We have a total of four protons adjacent or vicinal to this hydrogen, for example, and the splitting pattern we see here, which is exactly what would be indicated for four protons adjacent to or vicinal to a proton, is a quintet. This is exactly consistent with the n plus 1 rule and uses the idea that the NH2 protons and CH2 protons here are very similar in their coupling properties. The main point, though, is that the homotopic protons in this molecule have equal chemical shifts. And we can see other sets of homotopic protons implied at the carbons based on these chemical shifts that are listed for the other protons. Enantiotopic protons are also indistinguishable by NMR since the radio waves used to excite the protons are themselves achiral. And this molecule provides a nice example of this. If we draw this molecule from kind of a side-on perspective with the ring oriented like this, we find that both methyl groups are pointed above the plane of the ring, like so. This means that both hydrogens attached to the methyl-bearing carbons are below the plane of the ring, and that the molecule as a whole has a plane of symmetry that cuts right through the carbonyl group, like so. That plane of symmetry exchanges the hydrogens. So these hydrogens are enantiotopic. And in fact, the calculated NMR spectrum confirms this. Both protons have equal chemical shifts. They both show up at 2.16 ppm. Unfortunately, their signal is buried in the 2.08 signal for the protons down here. But the numbers here make the point that these protons have equal chemical shifts by virtue of the fact that they're enantiotopic. From the perspective of the achiral radio waves exciting the protons in this molecule, these enantiotopic protons are in identical chemical environments, and as a consequence, they'll have equal chemical shifts. Diastereotopic protons are distinguishable even by achiral molecules and phenomena, and so they will exhibit different chemical shifts, since from the perspective of the even achiral radio waves in an NMR experiment, they're in different chemical environments, even though they have the same connectivity. And so both of the examples we're going to look at here involve rings. In the example from the last slide, notice that if we look at a different set of protons within the same molecule, namely protons attached to the same carbon but on opposite sides of the ring, we find that those protons are diastereotopic. So let's redraw the molecule, focusing on a different set of protons this time. If we look instead at the two protons connected here, we would find that these two hydrogens share a diastereotopic relationship. And I'll let you verify that on your own using either the Q-test or symmetry elements. The proton cis to the two methyl groups has a higher chemical shift, 2.08, than the proton that's trans to the methyl groups, which shows up at a chemical shift of 1.83. 
these distinct chemical shifts are directly a result of the fact that the protons are in different environments because they're diastereotopic. Even this example, in which these hydrogens that we focused on initially were homotopic, contains pairs of diastereotopic protons. And here, we don't have to worry about the chair structure. We can focus on the average sort of flat cyclohexane structure. And what we notice, if we look, for example, at the two protons connected to this carbon, is that this pair of protons is also associated with a diastereotopic relationship. So we should expect them to have different chemical shifts because they're in different environments. It's clear, for example, that this proton is closer to this NH2 group than this proton is. This difference in internal distance alone is enough to suggest that these hydrogens are in different electronic environments and should have different chemical shifts. If you want more practice with this, the website linked here is a great resource for practicing identifying the number of unique NMR signals within a structure, which involves determining some of these pairwise stereotopic relationships to determine which hydrogens are truly unique and which aren't.